Welcome back, Bea. Hi, Twinsy. Good morning. Hi, Twinsy. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm so excited and looking forward to today's episode. I've kind of been like... Me too. Looking forward to today. Me too. So we I'm have... Very excited. I say that he is a legend, an icon. Uh-huh. And <laughs> is our second male guest. Yes, second male guest. Um, and this is something that we have had a request for. Mm-hmm. And I want to dedicate this episode, especially for my brother, my younger brother, that has um, battled with mental health and has been in the military. And our guest today has gone through all that. And I can't wait to hear his story. So let's welcome Voodoo. And he is from TikTok and Instagram. Nice. Hello, Voodoo. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Mama. How y'all doing? <laughs> good, good, Thank good. You. How are you? Uh, good. It's another day. <laughs> great, great. I love it. <laughs> All right. So, how did you feel when we first reached out to you, Voodoo? Were you like, "Are these girls crazy"? <laughs> no, I mean, I just wasn't expecting it, you know, because you know when I first saw the message request, you know, I had gone through like your profile, and I was like, "It's like a woman-led group," and a lot of women-led groups don't like a lot of men on their shows, you know. So to like see it, and then, but I saw, you know. I, the name, you know, and I talked to my mom about it, you know, embracing your markings and stuff like that. I was like, okay, you know, this may be something good, you know, this may be something that I need to hop on. You know, I've been on other podcasts before, but it was all about business and like uh, uh, mental health and growth. It wasn't anything where it was like diving in depth into my story and then, you know, hopefully encouraging other people to do better for themselves, you know, and to finally yes. accept everything that they've been through and, you know, move move forward from it. You know what? I love the fact that you asked your mom. Yes, like, I love that's it. so that, sweet. That's great. <laughs> and you know what? I have hey, a question. Like I have a question, Buddha, because you look so young, but you are so wise. Do you mind if I mm-hmm. ask you how old you were? Uh, I'm 29. Wow. <gasps> You're young. Oh, my God. So mm-hmm. you are like my mm-hmm. little brother's age. Mm-hmm. Wow. A lot of people are surprised. Yes. Oh, my God. Okay, so you're my brother. Can I just call you brother? <laughs> sure. I'll, I'll, I'll adopt you. Same here. I can have one more. I have four already, so one more. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Me and my brother, that's all it is. Oh, really? Okay, that was my other question. I'm like, do you have sisters? Yeah. No, I have a younger brother. Um, he's, he's 24. Yeah. We're five years apart. Uh, I think he'll be 25 this year. Or he'll be turning 24 this year. I don't remember. You know, I've smoked a couple times. I don't remember. (laughs) You lose track of all that, I'm telling you. Because I used to know my brother's age, like, easily. But you know what? Now I'm just like, um... I don't know. They're just close to 50s now. <laughs> but, ay, ay, ay. Okay, so um, I know that you are on TikTok and on Instagram. And by the way, you guys, it, can you just give them your handle name? Um, I think it's the same on both places, right? Yeah, it's voodoo underscore 0692. Um, it used to just be voodoo 0692 for my TikTok, but being banned twice, I had to resort to my Facebook to log into another TikTok, so I had to use the handle that I had on Instagram. So it's oh. the same. Wow. Okay, awesome, awesome. But you guys need to go check him out because apart from the videos that he makes that are like educational and mm-hmm. like informative and the awareness that he puts out there, he is hilarious. <laughs> He's so funny. I'm like, I'm, I, oh my God. Because, como se dice, like, algunas veces no sé ni con qué vas a salir, Buru. And I just end yeah, up laughing. I don't, I don't, honestly, sometimes I don't even know what comes to my mind. Sometimes I just, I just do it. You know, I've, I've always been the very, I've always been kind of quiet, you know, and I'm kind of shy at the beginning when people get to meet me. Same here. But then it's like once I get to warm up to you, you know, I'm very, very, like, open, you know. It's like me and my uncle. Me and my uncle used to go back and forward. I get a lot of my dark humor from my uncle, Mm -hmm. uh, Coach CP. You know, he was a coach back at home. Uh Me and him would always go back and forward with jokes and stuff like that. He would still call me, you know, randomly. And just just dark humor, just try to joke around, you know. Yeah. Stuff like that and <laughs> Oh my god. That is so funny. Well, I don't know, but you you're hilarious. You're a little hoot. 
porque me da una risa contigo. Like, it's, it's just, it's really fun to follow him, you guys. So if you guys want to go check him out, go check him out on on TikTok and on Instagram because he's funny on both. Um, just prepare them. Just prepare them. You know, there may be some something that may strike some people. You know, they may get offended. You know, you know what? <laughs> this, the internet is sensitive cuando quiere. It, yeah, Ugh. I agree. <laughs> I'm like, you guys, it's the internet. Like, stop taking it so seriously. And if you, know, if you don't agree with something, just no pass to, on. Yeah, there's no need to argue. There's no need just to send a through. message. Just move on with your day. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I never. I tell people. Yeah, like, I never got that. <laughs> like, si no te gusta algo, why are you going to put your energy into it? I just keep on scrolling. Yeah. I'll be like, eh, not my thing. Move on. <laughs> yeah, but um, I voodoo. Okay, so where are you originally from, or South where were Texas, you raised? Santa Rosa, Texas. <gasps> You're Santa in Rosa, Texas. Texas. Wow. Wow. I have a brother out there. My older brother. Well, I live. I live in Oklahoma. I'm originally from um, South Texas. Oh, okay. Um, okay. I got medically retired. I got medically retired here in Oklahoma, and I just decided to stay because. Cost of living is cheap. Weed is legal. It's a constitutional carry state. You know, it's, <laughs> it, it's a very, very lax state. It's one of those like, hey, if you want to retire, you should probably come here because you know there's, there's not a lot of issues. Yeah, you have your gang violence. You got all this. You got that. But at the same time, it's that's kind everywhere. Of like what you make yeah, them. that's you know, everywhere. If, if you don't get in with the wrong people, like you'll be fine. Well, maybe you know. Whenever I want to retire, which I'm closer to it than you are, <laughs> maybe I'll. I'll hit you up and be like voodoo can I, do you need a neighbor because <laughs> oklahoma sounds very gringo to me yeah that's what i was thinking too i was like oklahoma <laughs> well i mean it's 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 actually not it's a it's a native state they have, there's a lot of natives here you have your comanches oh. your kiowa your oh. uh kato's your, know Tessies, that. Uh, your chatas huh i did not know that me neither that's very interesting yeah, I a lot of it is, is tribal land. <laughs> oh, I was just picturing kind of like ranches, not ranches, but like nothing out there. I, don't I, know. I know. I don't want to sound racist, you guys. Uh, please do not crucify <laughs> me for this. No, but, no, no. Uh, there, there, there's a lot of rancho. There is. Yeah, no, <laughs> pero yo me estaba imaginando more like hillbillies. Yeah, that's what I, me too. But I, I, I'm kind of scared to say I, the me words. Me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a lot of We actually have like a huge. Yeah. No, more cotton. We have more, cotton. a lot more algodón. Um, oh, that makes me uh, even more scared. <laughs> <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> but no, there's a lot of uh, Latinos out here. There's a huge Latino community here. Oh, wow. Um, and we have a lot of natives. Yeah, it's, it surprises people, but there's a lot of Latinos here. <laughs> oh, I did not is. know that. I feel so stupid right now. Me too. Wow. Well, it's because you have to remember, you have to remember Tulsa is the four winds. Um, pretty much every interstate in the country meets in Tulsa. So when it comes to, and this is getting a little more on the, you know, in-depth side, when it comes to, like, human trafficking and stuff like that, they have to pass through here because of I-44. I-44 goes straight to Tulsa. Oh. So you're going to have a lot of, you know, illegales and stuff like that here. You know, they come and work and, you know, they try to get their pay for working on stuff down. Yeah, so you're going to find a lot of Latinos here. Oh. That's very You're interesting. educating us right now. Yeah. Like, seriously, because I feel so like, <laughs> wow. I You're thought dumb. California was the best state. Because <laughs> <laughs> we have it all here. Yeah. How's the weather? Hot. It's really hot. It's way mm. too hot. It's hotter than my piss right now. I'm going to be really hot. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, see, that's, that, that, that has to be no. Yeah, uh, that would be a no for me. We're either. coast babies. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would not. If yeah, I can barely I think have yesterday, yesterday with the humidity it was one hundred seven. <gasps> oh my no! If I could barely handle the heat here, and we're in the nineties, yeah, <laughs> I cannot. No, <laughs> that's already a no for me. I will not be retiring in Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, I okay, Voodoo. So I want to get into your story. Um, let us know how did you grow up? You know and. What led you to, you know, to you where you're at right now? What, you know, what inspired you to be open about sharing your journey? Because it's not easy, especially for a male Latino. You're supposed to be oh, machista yeah. and, you know, tough and you're military and, you know, um, I just I just want to know from the beginning, you know, like, how were you raised? How what did you go oh, through as a know, child? I was raised, you know, in a very, very machista type Latino, you know, house. Uh, my my father's from Reynosa, 
Oh, um, okay. But, you know, we were always very broke, very poor. Uh, my father used to be huge in the drug game. I ended up in the drug game, you know, whenever we ended up homeless. But, you know, that's a little bit down the road. But it was always trying to make ends meet. You yes. know, my father was heavily into coke and heavily into alcohol. So, you know, that took a priority, you know. And we never lived in the best house. You know, we always had, you know a used car, you know, there was at one point in time my father had bought a truck from somebody and then we ended up having to go and turn it in because it came out being stolen. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I remember one time, you know, whenever I was a kid, I don't know why the memory just came back, but it, in that truck, there was no space for me because it was, it was a manual truck. So I had to sit at my mom's feet. Every time we'd go like yeah. grocery shopping and stuff like that or we go to the store, I would have to sit at my mom's feet. So I would sit there, you know, all kind of like crunched up, you know, but we, we, we made it happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom made it happen, essentially. You know, there was times where I didn't realize, you know, that we didn't have anything to our name, that we didn't have no money, we didn't have no food. You know, my mom would try to scrounge up, you know, as much coin as she could. Um, and then we go to uh, the convenience store. It's called Chapas, which my uncle is now married to the daughter of the owner of that, um, that, that, that uh, convenience store. Mm. And I remember one time going there, and I think my mom was like 20 cents short. And uh, there was a guy, uh, his name was, they, they called him T-Bird. Uh, he told my mom, he's like, no, nah, I got it, Mickey, like, you're good. So um, we went over to the park, and my mom had gotten, you know, a loaf of bread, some potted meat, some Doritos, and a Big Red. And uh, we shared it. And what mm. she was doing was she would, like, put as much, you know, she would put potted meat on the slice of bread and then put the Doritos and then put the other slice of bread, just to make it seem like more. Yeah. We just stayed out there, you know, at the park, you know, for, like, two or three hours. Um, I didn't realize it, but it was kind of my mom, you know, trying to pass the time, trying to figure stuff out, you know, trying to see when we were going to make it. Um, my mom put herself heavily in debt because my father, you know, just, just couldn't get away from that vicio. Mm. So we always had loans and loans and loans. I remember so many times going to like the pawn shops and there was some other loan place where every paycheck, we'd go to that loan place and he'd renew the loan, renew the loan, renew the loan. And I'm like, you know, now that I, I realize, I'm like, damn, like, the drugs are more important. Wow, yeah. Um, but I feel like a big part of the reason why he stayed around was because of me. Um, his family, I was the first grandson. I was the first male grandson, you know, in the mm. family. So, um, and he was he was a ladies' man. You know, he used to be huge in the, the, the narco traficante stuff, and he was a ladies' man. And I feel like that's why he didn't leave, was because he had a kid with my mom, which was me. Um, and then when he came out of prison... Uh, you can see my brother, and then it's like at that point in time, he really couldn't leave. Um, <laughs> but so, but that's that's hard though, because in a way, have you ever felt responsible for your mom being in that? Like, have you ever felt like, oh, you know, it's guilty? because of me that he didn't leave, and maybe no, my mom would have um, been that better was off. Me. At one point in time, you know, I did have that mentality but you know once I actually talk to the therapist about it all and stuff like none of that falls on me that falls on my mother and my father you know yes. those were the choices that they They're, made and those are choices that they have to come to terms with you know there's still times mm-hmm. I have to talk to my mom because she is still definitely scarred from everything that happened and you know I had to have a heart to heart with her this past time that I went home for her birthday because she was essentially trying to make my brother feel bad because you know her credit's horrible it's, it's not the greatest and she was trying to get a car. And I told her, I was like, you cannot hold my brother responsible for the bullshit that you do with my father. Mm-hmm. You can't. Yeah, and something that I talked to my brother about, too. I was like, hey, man, I was like, you got to put your foot down. You're an adult. I was like, I understand you want to be there for mom. I was like, but we're not in a position right now where we can be there for mom. You know, in, 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 a, in, a, in a prime case, you know, in, in, a, in, in a great world, we could buy her everything that she needs. But we're not in a position that we're trying to grow. We're trying to make that bread so we can get there. Mm-hmm. I was like, so you have to, you have to have that heart to heart with her. I was like, you know, and I understand, you know, you respect mom and you know, you never, you never ever want to have that conversation with your mom, but like, you have to do like, you, you cannot just let yourself be, you know, walked all over. Yes. Um, and, and I told her, I was like, mom, you know, you, you probably need to go see somebody. Um, there's a lot that she's been through with my father. And then, you know, um, my pops came along, my stepdad came along when I was 23. I want to oh, say, okay. and um, he passed away last year. Um, 
he caught pneumonia and then he caught COVID mm. and he just didn't make it out. They put him in a medically induced coma and he didn't make it out. Um, so she has that. And then a little bit before that, the little, uh, my cousin, my primita, which she adopted, uh, cause my cousin was, was being up in Dejo. Um, she passed away too, but that's because, you know, my cousin and his girlfriend didn't take care of them. You know, they got all taken away by CPS. Oh, um, yes. I am that so sorry. Kids. That's so much loss. Yes. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. It was. A, it was a tough year for my mom because it was Michaela, which was like, now you know I consider her my little sister. She's the adopted one. Mm-hmm. Right after that, it was her her father, my grandfather. Mm-hmm. Uh, the month after that, it was my pop, and then the month after that, it was uh, her oldest brother, oh, Junior. Yes. So it was all within like a five month uh, span. Wow. They all went so. Um, I told her that mommy probably got to go see somebody. Yeah, you know, because there's there's help. a lot weighing on your heart. Yeah, there's a lot weighing on your heart. I was like, and you can't you can't continue on life, you know, trying to hold everybody else accountable for stuff like that. Yeah. How um, old, how old was the little girl? Four, five. Oh, Aww. she was tiny. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what happened was that her parents, my my primo, they weren't the best parents. You know, uh, mm-hmm. their first three all had uh, all had Down syndrome, so they were getting money from the state from that. But with that, um, they were supposed to have a certain type of household for them. You know, they were all supposed to have individual rooms, you know, whoopty woo, and they didn't. So when, you know, the state stepped in and took them away, what they ended up, what my mom ended up finding out is the little one, the youngest one, which was supposed to be the one that was normal, mm-hmm. um, they hadn't done anything medical for her. She didn't even have her social security card. Oh, my goodness. So when they were trying to play catch up with all her medical stuff, they had identified that she had a dime sized heart murmur. Oh. Well, a week the week after that she passed away, she was supposed to have another uh, appointment to go look further into that heart murmur. But what they hadn't been able to identify yet was that she had a little tumor in her brain. Oh. Um, so she was watching Coco Melon, and in some certain, some parts of Coco Melon, you know, there's little flashes and stuff like that. Um, and after she passed away, they were able to identify that in pictures and stuff like that. That when they took pictures with a flash, she would seize up. Well, oh. she had a seizure. The seizure kind of played in you know the the seizure and the heart murmur kind of worked together Uh um so she had a seizure then had a little heart attack and then another seizure then a little heart attack and it just kept going from there uh from what my mom told me she uh she coded seven times before she finally signed the paperwork to dnr her um she just recently posted you know how hard that was but uh yeah she has has had a difficult year i mean my mom has not had it easy you know but no. and then living the way she, she lived yeah. with their dad. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, uh, there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of abuse involved. Uh, there was a lot of things that I got to see that, you know, fortunately my my brother didn't get to see. And there's a lot of stuff that he still doesn't understand. You know why I, I carry myself the way I do? Because you know I do not talk to my father. Mm-hmm. I don't talk to him. You know my brother has a, has communication with him, and you know it's like I told him, I was like, you know, he's always going to try to win you over with money, or win you over with time, or win you over with the cookout and stuff like that. I was like, but. I was like, I don't, I don't have to see him. I don't have to talk to him. I was like, you know, I can forgive him for everything he did. I was like, but I don't need to have a relationship with him. I was like, because that was a very, very toxic relationship. Mm-hmm. Yes. I was like, it wasn't a father. It wasn't a dad and son relationship. It was more like a, a friend relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's because I got to see a lot. You know, my father was the first person to point a gun at me. And that's whenever mm-hmm. I had to stand between him and my mom. Um, oh my because he wanted the, the bill money. You know, he had already he, all the extra money that my mom would allow him to have or whatever. You know, he had finished it, you know, partying with his friends and he wanted the rest of the bill money. Mm. And uh, he ended up pointing a gun at my mom and I stood in between there. You know, mm. and ever since then, you know, I was kind of like on the defensive, you know. Um, I had been bullied a lot as a kid, too. Um, you know, I used to get chased from the bus stop uh, all the way home. Uh, the older kids would throw me rocks, you know, trying to see how fast they can make the fat kid run. Um, what? So you used to be overweight? Yeah, the highest I ever weighed was, uh, I want to say, 347 pounds. And that's for ah. the freshman in high school. Wow. Um, oh, my God, Voodoo. Oh, my God. So oh my always- God. This <laughs> is, like, so much information. Okay. Wow. Okay, so first, I want to say, like... Your mom sounds like an amazing woman because she, she has went through it a lot and yes. she's still there for you guys even though she has issues and I can I can relate to that because my mom 
has a lot of past issues that things that she saw when she was a little kid that she's still carrying with Mm -hmm. and it's so much trauma it's the those generational curses that we talk about and Mm -hmm. but i am so proud of you for encouraging your mom to seek help yes because i know that's not easy and i'm sure she's like you know like whatever <laughs> or, or not just that but like excuse me you're my son you're not yeah, gonna tell I've me heard what it. I i've heard it multiple times yeah i've heard it multiple times where she's like you know no child of mine is ever gonna speak to me and i gave you you know life and i'm like whoa whoa, whoa. we're both adults i'm about to be 30 now yeah. this is where you sit down and now you take advice you know you try to give me as much advice as you could i was like but i had to grow up a whole lot faster because of the situations that we were put in mm-hmm. yes. you know because we were homeless and all that stuff so it's like you know yes. there's a different type of growth that comes from that there's a different type of growth that comes from always being on the defensive you know it's, trying to be that pillar you know when your mom yeah. is at her weakest point you know trying mm-hmm. to ensure your brother doesn't get to see everything else you're you trying know, to so be the protective brother. You're trying to be you. You're being forced to grow up quick because of the situations you have lived in, and it's almost like he was forced to be the dad. Yeah, because his dad was partying. Yeah, <laughs> so he was and forced I mean, to be the dad, the, the the husband. <laughs> you know, not it, not in the term, but like you were, yeah. you were, you were trying to help protect your mom. Your mom. Yes. Yeah, that's a lot, Voodoo. You we were trying to provide, like, help your mom make it, you know. And that was the it. thing, you know. My brother still, my brother still calls me when it comes to advice because, of course, and it's kind of like the, it's kind of like he plays the mommy daddy game, you know. Mm-hmm. My mom will give him a certain type of, you know, because he got a CDL, and of course she didn't want him to leave, and she tried to give him the whole, oh, you won't be able to go to church and this and that, and uh, my brother calls me. He's like, what do you think about this? Like, you got to live your life, bro. <laughs> you can't, you know, hold yourself back because mm-hmm. of family. I was right. like, at the end of the day, I was like, and this is the hard, you know, the hard, the harsh truth, and you know, the hard reality. I was like, is that when everybody else is six feet under, where are you going to be? Mm-hmm. Yeah, by yourself. You still got the, you got the, you got the rest of your life. You still have to live. I was like, and hopefully, you know, we get a, you know, a, a lot more years with mom. I was like, but at some point in time, I was like, she's going to go. Mm-hmm. I was like, are you going to hold yourself back because of that? Yeah, you know, and it, it hits him kind of hard. And I feel like that's what he calls me. He's like, you're always going to be very blunt and honest, and you're just going to give me the truth, and you don't give a fuck you know, about my feelings. And I was like, you're right, I don't. <laughs> I was like, Cause I've experienced life. I've experienced life. I've gotten to see a lot, and I want to see you grow. I want to see you do better than me. Yeah. You yes. know, I don't I want you to have to go through all the things I did. I think he's looking for that shield that you used to do for him, you know, when he was a little boy. He's mm-hmm. trying to have you shield him, but now you're like, no, you're ready to handle this. You have to confront <laughs> it. Deal with it. Grow up. Yeah. It's coming. It's coming. man. Like hurry up. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So then, um, so addressing that, and then, so now, you know, growing up, struggling at home, you know, with you guys facing hard times because of your dad's irresponsibility, and then todavía on top of that, you being bullied at school. Oh my God! Like, mm-hmm. how did you cope with that at that time? Or I mean, I just kept it pushing. I, I kept it moving. Um, you know, I always wanted to be everybody's friend. I wanted everybody to like me. Um, wow. I, I just wanted friends, essentially. Yes. Um, I did have a couple of friends, but now coming to realize, you know, they just they just had me there because I was a smart guy. You know, everybody looks at me and they're like, you know, this guy looks like a pendejo. Like, you know, I was really intelligent. You know, I was top 10 <laughs> in my class. Like, you know, I was top 10 in my class. I was an intel analyst in the military. Like, I scored really high in my ASVAB. Like, I, I was an intelligent dude. So they always wanted me there, you know, just so they could get answers off of me or copy off my tests and stuff like that. So that's kind of how I found my friendship, mm. you know. And I, I didn't, wa- didn't want to be at home, you know, because I didn't want to have to go through some of the bullshit. So I joined, like, the UIL, and I joined, like, the BPA and all that stuff, which were different programs out there for, like, competing. So it's, like, I would have, like, calculator applications, number sense, dictionary skills, all that stuff, you know. I was doing a lot of extracurriculars just so I could be out of my house. You know, I started college when I was a seventh grader. Wow. Um, I said there was a... There was a, a tech program back at home through the Texas State Technical College. It was an engineering program. You know, I started going through engineering courses, you know, in seventh grade, um, graphic design, all that stuff, just so that I could be away from home. And sometimes so I could have a lunch because 
I sometimes we we just didn't have the money for it. So wow, I did what I had to do. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. but now come to realize it, you know those those are not people that I wanted to be my friends, and that's why I always encourage people. You know, actually go and look for your friends. You know, those people that are around you, the popular people. A lot of times they have a lot of issues at home. Mm-hmm. They have a lot of issues within themselves. You know, those aren't the people that you want around because essentially what they're going to do is bring you down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, they're always going to use you as like a stepping stone. You know, they're always going to use you as a punching bag, you know. Yes. Growing up, I got bullied a lot just because of my weight, you know, because I was fat. I was slow. Um, I had, there was one guy when I was a freshman, um, he used to come and punch me all the time because he told me that you're fat. You shouldn't be able to feel it. Um, oh, my goodness. And there was another guy. Uh, his name is, uh, we used to call him Big O. Um, he was a bigger guy too, but he was all, he was part of the popular class. He used to get bullied, but at the same time, a lot of people didn't mess with him because he was a lot bigger than me. And when he saw he punched me in the stomach and I coughed up a little bit of blood, that's whenever he came to my, you know, my rescue and he pushed him up against the locker, wall lockers fell over, coaches came out and he used to do that. But after Big O did that, you know, I, I saw him step up for me. I was like, you know what? I need to start stepping up for myself. And that's when I snapped. The next time somebody came up and bullied me, uh, I snapped. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it became it, then then it became an issue because then at that point in time you know I'm going for blood and you know you know they're trying to call parents and stuff like that you know yeah. they're trying to call my mom and my uncle was saying that's that when they want to step in <laughs> yeah that's when they want to so, step in and do something because I my like I said my younger brother Damien was very bullied there was a point where you know me and my older brother would pull up to his elementary school and one time they even told me you're gonna get arrested um the principal and i was like well if you don't do nothing about it then i'm willing to do it i was 15 at the time so i was like i didn't care you know you you see yourself as invisible so i'm (laughs) i'm eight years older than my brother and my my older brother is 11 years older than me so almost 17 18 years older than my younger brother so we were like his defensors and we would go to the school but one time this kid put scissors in his neck (gasps) and like actually cut his shirt and was like threatening to basically like shank him oh my goodness and i remember pulling up and i was like oh heck no and i grabbed the little kid and i put him (laughs) against the locker you know like he said right now like i just had like a flashback (laughs) And the kid was like, is that a threat? And I was like, tu madre. I'm like, no, take it as a promise. And after that, we put my, my younger brother in martial arts. And we're like, Good. you have to do this for Learn yourself. So he started defending yourself. himself. Yeah. And then they would start calling the house. And we're like, well, why did he act that way? Yeah. You know, and then we would roll mm-hmm. up to the principal's office and be like, well, you guys are not doing anything. And he, he has, has to, to defend himself. Yeah the heck i mean you 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 have to at some point in time because if not they were just going to step all over you and Mm -hmm. i mean it started all the way from you know from the time that i was in elementary school you know there was one time um it was raining and we were watching a movie and i was trying to crawl over to where my friends were at and my finger my pinky finger had gone all the way back so it's like all the weight of my body went down onto my finger i ended up shattering you know from my finger all the way down into my arm well, I kept on trying to go to the nurse's office and they wouldn't let me. So finally, a friend of mine and me snuck out, said we were going to the restroom, went to the nurse's office. Uh, they identified that it was broken. It was shattered. Um, and when my mom went to go talk to the principal about it, because, you know, the teacher didn't want to let me go to the nurse's office. You know, the principal, you know, blamed me, told her if he wasn't overweight, he wouldn't have had that issue. <gasps> so. <laughs> no. <laughs> Are you serious? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. I would have punched him in his neck. Oh, oh yeah. She tried to jump over the counter. They held her back. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Mom. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. Okay. So then, you know, you get out of high school and what happens? Um, I had joined the military when I was a junior in high school. Um, I had lost a lot of weight. I lost all my weight my freshman year. Um I, it wasn't the, the healthiest of ways, you know, I starved myself a lot just because I wanted to be accepted, you know, it was a girl that I liked that I wanted to accept, you know, like me back and all that stuff. And I dropped, I think, 110 pounds, I want to say, in like 10 months. Wow. Um, but even like that, you know, I still wasn't happy. You know, I was still kind of, you know, I still had issues going on. And then, of course, everybody started their rumors, like, oh, he's probably doing his dad's coke and stuff like that. Like, that's how he lost weight and all that oh, other stuff. Oh, um, and there was a lot of stuff going on in those situations that I had to get out of where um, 
I went and talked to the recruiter. You know, they uh, they, they gave us the ASVAB. I scored high. You know, it was just one of those things where they go up to the school and they just hand everybody an ASVAB. And if you score well, they're going to call you back. And the recruiter came over and he's like, hey, man, you know, scored really high, this and that. And we have all these options. And it was every option that was open to me. You know, every job in the military was open. And I was like, you know, mm. what's going to get me out of here the fastest and what's going to, you know, what's going to pay me the most? And, of course, he shows me his uh, pay stub and he shows me, you know, the bonuses and stuff like that. My only issue was, trying to get both parents to sign oh. so first thing that i was going to do was you know what, i'm gonna call my father because i know he's going to do whatever that i want in order to try to get in my good graces and he's going to sign and he came in and he gave his little story my father went a wall he went a wall because they wouldn't let him go to mexico on leave or whatever so he just went a wall so of course he came in giving him you know his bullshit stories about his military time and he yeah. signed the paperwork and then um uh, my recruiter asked me he's like how are we going to get your mom to sign i was like we can go to a restaurant and say that you're going to talk to her about the military, but then you pull out the paperwork that I already have my contract ready. Um, so we went and sat down, and my mom used to work at a restaurant called Los Atados. She was like, the, I think, the accounting, uh, accounting clerk there. Mm. And, um, you know, so we had our lunch, and, you know, the recruiter's pitching her all this stuff about the military, you know, and all that stuff. And she's looking at me, and she's telling me the whole time, she's like, you're not going, you're not going. Well, the recruiter just looks at her, and he pulls out the paperwork, and he's like, your ex is already signed oh. and she looked at me and she was just like are you sure you want this are you sure you want this i was like yeah like this is what i want to do so um she looks at me or whatever and she's like fine she's okay so she signs the paperwork and she looks at the recruiter she's like if he dies it's on you <gasps> oh my goodness oh. And she just walked away after that and the recruiter's like well that was rough and i was like yeah i was like she's a tough one man but um, I went and signed all my paperwork, went up to MEPS, and then a year later, uh, I, uh, four days after I graduated, I ended up in basic training, um, went to AIT, and then a week after I got out of AIT, I was in Afghanistan. Uh, I got to wow. Fort Riley, Kansas, and uh, I was originally supposed to go to 234 Armor, uh -huh. and then they came back and they said, hey, you know, we're looking for private Elizondo or whatever and I was like well that's me and he's like hey you're coming with me we're going to 44 Cav and I was like okay cool um, so on the way out <laughs> funny thing is funny part it's funny uh, <laughs> the guy that helped me was helping me with my duffel bags it was snowing it was right it was for Riley Kansas it was snowing there was ice on the floor and he's trying to be all cool and help me out and he hit black ice <gasps> and I remember he slipped fell and all my duffel bags went up and he gets up he's like I'm alright I'm alright I'm alright I was like you sure man I was like that was a hell of a fall. <laughs> oh, my God. Was he okay? I think so. Oh. <laughs> You're like, I hope so. <laughs> wow. And so so uh, I had asked him, I was like, so what, what's this unit like? Whatever. He's like, oh, we're deploying. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, when are we deploying? He's like, Friday. This was on a Monday. I was, he's like, Friday. And I'm like, so I'm staying on rear detachment, right? And he's like, nah, I got your orders. He's like, you going with us? He's like, we'll go to CIF tomorrow. You'll pick up all your stuff. Oh. Wow! Wow! Yeah, so oh, oh my God! Mom. I originally had I originally had called her and told her that I was deploying with two, three, four in like March, April time frame. So uh -huh. when I got home after that day, I called her. I was like, "Mom, I'm deploying." She was already upset about the first one. Of course, she's giving me a whole little spiel about you know dying and all that sort of stuff. And she's like, "I know you told me you're leaving in like March, April." I was like, "No, I'm deploying." <gasps> and she's like, "Okay." I was like, "I leave on Friday." Oh my, oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Ay, tu mama, ay, tu mama, as a mom, because, you know, I have, yeah. a, I have a little one. Um, oh, my heart would yeah. just be. I have mm. a little, I have a little one. Well, he's not so little. I he's know 15, they're not so little, but. but. And he really wants to get into the Navy. And oh. I told him, no, no, try something else. No, I'm against it. No. What if you die? No. <laughs> and then he's like, mom, but I want to. And I'm like, no. <laughs> oh, I man. mean, the reality of it, the, the reality of, uh, of it is, is if he wants to, if he really wants to, he's going to wait till he turns 18 and I you know. don't need your signature no more. I know. You know what, Voodoo? We don't like that kind <laughs> yeah, of talk no. here, yes. okay? <laughs> don't, don't tell me that, Voodoo, please. <laughs> no. I, I did tell him at the end of the day, it is your choice, but I'm not for it. And I don't agree. Well, it's because that's we have only like I have only one son. And she only I, has one, one son. Yeah. So it's like if I yeah. lose him my whole life, yeah it's gone oh girl I'd, I'd bury myself with my son yes there's no way 
you gotta be you gotta you gotta be positive about it you know because the more and more you push him back you know the more and more he's gonna he's do gonna it. go against it mm-hmm. yeah i know mm-hmm. oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay okay let's so what what military <laughs> <laughs> what military uh <laughs> branch did you get into the army i was in the oh, army okay. for nine years oh, oh wow. wow that was a long time so, yeah, I wanted to do twenty, but it got cut short with like my uh, my back issues and stuff like that. So uh, I ended up medically retiring me at nine years. So, oh, but you know, okay. I did I did my thing. You know, mm-hmm. I deployed early. You know, I spent my nineteenth birthday over there. Came back. I got promoted really really fast. Um, I was a sergeant at nineteen. Wow, um, that's great. Yeah, I was. I, I, I I didn't like being on bottom. Like I didn't like being at the bottom. So I didn't like people telling me what up. to do. But fast. But even like that, uh, I, I feel like it was too fast. It was honestly probably you know the worst thing that could have happened was because I was still very immature, holding that much rank. So there was still yeah. stuff that I was doing that was dumb. You know, even as a drill sergeant, you know, when I I got to like uh, when I got selected to be a drill sergeant, I had submitted my packet for civil affairs, which is on the special operations side, and um, they had accepted me. You know, they had given me a class date and all that stuff, and. Uh, I don't know where, you know, I get an email that says, congratulations, you've been accepted to the Drill Sergeant Academy. I'm like, what? I don't want to do that. <laughs> like, I don't want that. <laughs> wow. So you've, and, you've had success really fast in life. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I called and I was like, hey, what's the deal with this? And they're like, oh, you can call the Drill Sergeant Branch. I called the Drill Sergeant Branch and they told me, they're like, you either go to Drill Sergeant School, you do your two years, or uh, you get signed your deck statement, which is basically like it ends your career. The next time that you get looked at for a promotion, they're going to end your career. Uh, because that's supposed to be a prestigious school. You know, it's supposed to be one of those career development schools and only certain personnel get selected for that school. So if they're selected you, you need to take it. Yeah, kind of um, like you don't be a grateful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. And then, um, okay, so you do that. Now, and I don't know if this part, Voodoo, if I'm imagining things or if I'm confusing you with somebody else, but you were in a relationship when you were in the military, correct? Yeah, I was. <laughs> I I, I want to get into that because that's another thing. Así como hablamos de como los guys son cabroncitos, las mujeres también somos sí. cabroncitas. Oh, and I feel yes. like we're worse. Oh, yeah. If I'm keeping it um, honest. Yeah. Um, when I was a drill sergeant, I had met this, this girl, you know, this woman, and... Um, I felt deep. I felt deep for her, um, her and her son. You know, I wanted to do the most for them. Um, and there was a lot of red flags that I dismissed just because I had fallen in love for her. Was um, that your first you love? Know, from, no, that wasn't my first love. That definitely wasn't my first love. But she was one that you know came with with a package. Mm-hmm. And the fact that I fell in love with both her and her son was was hard. Yeah. Um, and I tried to do the most for her, um, even up to like I think it was, I think it was a second, third birthday party. Uh, we had done it at Flips in San Antonio, and I spent a lot of money on that birthday party uh, just because, you know, to appease her and her family. and um, To make her happy. I remember she posted, the, yeah, when she posted pictures on social media, I got cut out of the pictures. <gasps> and when I asked her about it, you know, initially it was apparently because she had supervisors on her page and stuff like that she was in the military too and we apparently were supposed to, we weren't supposed to be together because I was a non-commissioned officer and she was a soldier and this and that it was really because she had a lot of male followers you know she did have a lot of she had a lot of Instagram clout she had a big following mm. on Instagram and um, she just didn't want the men to see it that's messed so up so there was a lot of a lot of a lot of red flags um, and it was, it was a very, very toxic relationship. We were always arguing. There was a lot of insecurity. You know, there was not a lot of trust. But still, you know, I was still willing to show her, you know, what a woman should be treated like. You know, like I said, uh, I feel like that was at one point my biggest downfall was every time that I got into a relationship with a woman, I wanted to treat them the way I wish my father would have treated my mom. Mm-hmm. So I did. I, I, it was above and beyond, you know, like the first Valentine's Day that we had together. I paid attention to everything that she had said that she once wanted in a relationship. So it was like the big old bear from Walmart, the plush one. It was like the life-size one. Yeah. All the flowers, the cookies, yeah. the candies, the balloons. And uh, I left early so that I could go to her office and set it all up. And the one thing I got was a punch in the arm. And, you know, I don't like surprises. You know that. And <gasps> it just... <clears throat> 
Um, I taught her son a lot. Um, I taught him how to like brand match, color code his his clothing. It was always yes, ma'am, you know, no, sir, stuff like that. You know, he was very, very, he was a good, good kid. Um, and it made me sad that his father didn't want to be in his life. Um, mm-hmm. So I tried to, you know, do as much for that kid as I could, you know, try to teach him as much as I could. And I did a lot for both him and her, you know, to the point where she had called me, I want to say about a month, a month ago to complain that uh, she misses a lot of the stuff that I used to do for her and that her son used to do for her because when they were together with me, he would throw a bitch fit if we left Walmart without getting her flowers. Aww. Because every time, he, every time he had a good day or a good week at daycare, I would take him to go get a Hot Wheels. That was his incentive. He was a very simple kid. Mm-hmm. That was his incentive. He wanted a Hot Wheel. <laughs> um, and if we would walk out without getting her flowers, he would cry. Aww. He would cry. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, it was... And... and- <laughs> Would you be okay with sharing what ended up happening with that relationship? The trust, the insecurities. Um, she'll probably hate me for this, but she ended up testing positive for an STD while we're together, or when we were married. And um, you guys were married. It didn't come from me. Yeah, it didn't come and, from me. And and I remember you sharing that um, you were with her brother at the, when you found out, wasn't it, or something like that. Yeah, we had brought her brother up here to live with us, so he could basically get like a new, a new, a new start to life. He was having a lot of issues in San Antonio, you know, and we felt like you know it might be better for him to move up here, and he might be able to get a, a different chance, mm-hmm. you know, maybe better chances, you know, getting a different environment, you know, not being around the same toxic people all the time. And um, I would go to work. I would go pick up her son sometimes, come home, wait for her to get home from work, take her brother to the gym with me, and then come back. So when I got that phone call. You know, that she had tested positive for an STD. You know, she's like, where'd it come from? And I was like, well, you tell me. I was like, because my life revolves around you and your family. I so was she like, told so you I have herself? no idea. Yeah, but try yep. to blame and, it on uh, him. Oh, que mensa. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. And, like, uh, <laughs> wow. And, and the thing was, was like, mm-hmm. and, 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 you know, I told her, I was like, it's kind of hard for me to, like, give you an STD, you know, if we haven't. She would fight me sex, you know, so I was like, you know, it's kind of hard for me to give you something if, if we you don't. know, we don't have sex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I was like, you know what, for peace of mind, you know, I'm going to go to the STD clinic, go get tested, and uh, we'll go from there. So I went to the STD clinic, and they told me, you know, no news is good news. And I was like, ah, I really don't know about that. But, you know, so I ended up calling them about... 12 days after they had done the test, I was like, hey, you know, I didn't hear anything back from y'all. And she's like, yeah, I'm looking at your uh, file right now. She's like, uh, yeah, you tested negative. And I was like, okay, so uh, what happened? She's like, do you want me to give you my honest opinion or do you want me to bullshit you? I was like, well, I want your honest opinion. She's like, your wife is cheating. Yeah. Wow. Tell me where you're going to get that. Yeah. And I was like, well, <laughs> um, and I went and grabbed a petition for divorce and slapped it on top of uh, my negative test results and gave it to her. <sighs> was she upset? Yeah, she was. She was. She was upset. Um, I hope it was at her. Tried to belittle me a lot. <laughs> no, uh, she was mad at the fact that you know I was leaving. I was leaving her and her son. You know, she. I remember she had tried to give me the grill trip about that, and you know, it was even after my birthday, after uh, the day of my birthday, uh, after we had split up. You know, I had tried to go out with some friends or whatever, and you know, I just, I, I just wasn't in it. Um, was there women trying to come around me? Yeah, but I wasn't paying attention to any of them. And I guess she had a friend out there who was saying that I was out there dancing with women. Cause for one, it's a lie because I don't, I really don't dance. I have horrible rhythm. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you know she belittled the hell out of me and you know she called me a piece of shit and all that other stuff and um that's when i ride down the bottle of vodka and that next day I, I downed a bottle of vodka the next day and um put a gun to my mouth oh my god you know my whole world was was crashing around me because you know my divorce had already, my, my divorce was happening you know i had found out through the military that you know my career was going to end because of my back and Mm. It's just like everything that I put my everything into was failing, yes. you know, was, was being taken away from me. So um, I had called an old friend of mine um, when I had the gun to my mouth and I told myself if he doesn't answer, you know, I'm pulling the trigger. Oh, my goodness. And mm. he answered. He, he uh, no, that's the thing. It was a ghost ring. So I don't know if you guys have ever heard that word. You know, it doesn't no. ring on your end, but apparently it rings on their end. No. So no. he called you. Yeah. So like when you. 
no, I called him, uh-huh. but the moment that I dialed his number, he picked up, and I was like, damn, dude, you're going to let it ring? He's like, it already rang three times on my end. What are you talking about? Oh, okay, okay. <gasps> wow, that's crazy. Oh, that's God's intervention. Yes. I be- I'm sorry, I believe in God. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, that's fine. That's fine. Wow. So I was like, hey, man, do you want to go get dinner or whatever? And I held that, you know, for a while. I never told anybody about that or whatever, but I did go seek help after that. You know, I went to go see my therapist and all that stuff. Good for you. I'm going to be real, you know. I am very, very fortunate to have had the, the therapist that I did because she kept it real. She kept it 100 with me. She wasn't bullshitting with me. You know, there's a lot of therapists that just see people. They come mm-hmm. in to see them as like test yeah. subjects. Yes. And just she did not see me money. like that. Mm-hmm. Um, her father was uh, uh, worked for Oklahoma Highway P- Patrol here. Uh, her boyfriend is a was a Marine veteran, and her great grandfather was in World War II. So, wow, she was very, very like stern. You know, sometimes I'd walk into her office and I look down, and she's like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Uh." <laughs> you needed that though and, at that time. You needed that energy. Oh, yes. most definitely. Yes. Most definitely, I needed that energy, and you know, I was grateful. You know that she was very, very upfront with me. You know, and I feel like sometimes that's the uh, that's the attention that we need. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. we don't need somebody to baby us sometimes, you know, that, yeah. you know, it, it, it does you take knowing the, the person, truth. it does take knowing the person, but at the same time, you know, sometimes people just need it, you know, up front, right. you know, you need to be very blunt, yes. you, need, you know. And those are people that really want to help you. Those are people that really, really want to help you. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, sometimes I'd go in there and just just to talk you know i bring lunch or whatever and we just talk and sit down and then sometimes we talk about her relationship issues and it became more of a friendship Mm -hmm. um and it really really helped me get through a lot you know she really helped me see everything that was wrong with me you know and it didn't start from my marriage it had started from my childhood Mm -hmm. you know she had told me and she's like you know you have to go quiet that child she's like that child that's still staring at that double barrel shotgun she's like you need to go quiet him you need to go let him know that it's okay, that he did his job, that, you know, mm. um, you no longer have to be protective, you know. And it's like, it was there was levels to it. You know, I had to go quiet that child, and I had to go, go quiet the child from another, you know, instance, and then quiet the child from another instance. And that's what a lot of people don't realize is that a lot of their own internal struggles, their own struggles are come from, you know, the inside. They have internal struggles that they have yet to deal with. Yes. You know, you see people in failed relationship after failed relationship, but it's like they continuously jump into relationship because they're looking for that little feel. They're looking for that, you know, that, that, that person that's going to show them some type of love, but they have yet to go back and quiet that person that's going through those other traumas. Mm-hmm. And yes. that's why I tell people, you know, don't go and jump into another relationship. Don't go and jump into a different venture if you have yet to quiet everything else that you have going on. And you see it a lot of my TikTok where people will come mm-hmm. in, try to come at me sideways and stuff like that. And, I never attack them with ignorance. I think mm-hmm. today I got a little stupid with one guy, but <laughs> I will never attack anybody with ignorance because attacking ignorance with ignorance is not going to get you anywhere. There's anyway. no point. If yeah. you attack, and, you know, and to be to be completely honest with you, I feel like the people that are negative or that do attack you, um, I, I really don't check for comments. I think I've commented on your TikTok like once. Um, and it was just like, you know, like, this is why I love you, you know, because you were it was a hilarious one. Um, but I, I don't really check for comments, but I feel like any time that I receive stupid comments on my TikToks, I feel like it's just people that are young and stupid. Like, it, it's not even worth fighting with them because it's like, dude, you, you have no idea what you're talking about. Or you can't even relate. Like, can you just keep on scrolling? Like, ¿qué estás haciendo? Te miras bien pendejo. Well, there's some that are young and stupid, and then there's some that have a lot of internal struggles going on. You know, there was a guy that had popped on my TikTok, and he had talked about, oh, he says he's happy, but yet uh, he seems lonely and this and that. And I had, like, a whole intervention with him in my comments and ended up, you know, pinpointing where all his issues came from. You know, and he was abused as a child by his parents. And he had never, he had said, you know, crying is for the weak and being emotional is for the weak. I was like, look, man, there is nothing stronger than a man that is in tune with his emotions. Mm-hmm. I was yep. like, because a man that's in tune with his emotions, I was like, it's not going to break. I was like, now a man that's trying to hide his emotions is going to break whenever some type of hardship comes through. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what, what it, you know, it boiled down to was his parents used to abuse him and he was never really allowed to show emotions. He was never allowed to be weak. He was never given that hug from his parents. Mm. So now he was trying to live life, trying to be tough, 
and trying to teach his daughters that they shouldn't be emotional. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You're doing your, your daughters a disservice by telling them that they're not supposed to be emotional. I was like, because at the end of the day, I was like, they're going to end up hurting other people around mm-hmm. them. I was like, just like you're hurting your own daughters. I was like, whether you believe it or not. Mm-hmm. Yes. I was like, your relationship with your wife and your daughters is going to go south. Mm-hmm. If you don't go and quiet that child, I was like, you need to go find peace with that child and realize that, you know, everything's going to be okay. And he had said, made some comment talking about, uh, who are you? You're nothing. You're nothing like me. I was like, I'm going to put it to you like this, man. I was like, you are so great at being a father and a husband because that's all you have. Mm. If you lose your wife and your kids, you're nothing again. Hmm. Where are you going to be at in life? What ended up happening? And after that, he deleted his comment and then he commented again. He's like, you know what? You're all right, man. He's like, just keep on pushing. And I'm like, (laughs) and and that's the thing. That's, That's my whole goal sometimes is just to be able to get to those people that are willing yeah. To actually see beyond, you know, their issues and be able to see that light. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody, you know, everybody, you know, has a piece to this pie that we call yes. life. Yes. You know, everybody has some type of meaning in this world. You know, you got to find it. And there's a lot of people that are still struggling with finding where they actually play a role mm-hmm. in this world. Mm-hmm. I know where I stand. I know where I belong. You know, I know what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, I'm still growing with it. And there's still a lot of people that have yet to find that. Wow, you're amazing, Voodoo. Yeah. You're okay. Amazing. So, do you have a book in the works? Yes, like, what's going you on? <laughs> you should create a book. No, <laughs> See, your therapist helped you, and you're helping other people. You know, it's like how the pay it forward. Yes. In a sense, you know, we need we need I like the tales, the tall tales from Voodoo <laughs> or something. Yes. Oh, that's a great I, title. I do it. I do it because I know a lot of people struggle with actually going to see somebody they're scared Mm -hmm. of Mm scrutiny and i was and i was about to ask you that sorry sorry didn't mean to interrupt you no you're good you're about to ask what i was about to ask you you know so you met up with your friend what actually got you or put that flame inside of you to be like i need to go see help because sometimes it's so hard for people to connect those two things and actually do the action and go. You mean like when he had the gun in his mouth and he called his friend? No, no, no. After he met okay. with his friend, because mm, okay. he said afterwards he, he made the appointment to see a therapist. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's like, how did you get to that point? Yes. It was just kind of going back to that moment where I had that gun in my mouth. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And realizing that I was a split second away from ending it all and no woman, no person was actually worth me ending it. You know, I had worked so hard to I get to the point where I was at. You know, I had a whole military career, which I said failed, but it realistically didn't fail. You know, I made no. an impact in the, in the military. You know, I still had mm-hmm. so I still have soldiers that hit me up now. You know, I have soldiers that are excited to see me on TikTok. You know, they'll hit me up to Instagram and tell me, like, oh, I saw you. You know, I miss hearing your voice and I miss you hearing, getting, you know, <laughs> hearing you getting after me and stuff like that. I'm like. I never thought I'd be getting appreciation for that. But yeah. it what? took that moment for me to realize that, you know, I, I serve the bigger purpose in life. Mm-hmm. Yes. You give that tough love, but people see beyond the tough love. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Now, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm such a big fan. I'm telling you, you're you're an icon. You're a legend in my books, Voodoo. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I am not. Yes, <laughs> yes, you are. I would really love to meet you in person, you know, um, especially what you're saying. I feel like you would connect with my younger brother and even with mm-hmm. my husband but my husband's very in tune with like his emotions and stuff mm-hmm. like that pero algunas veces he said he bottles things in and I'm like it's okay like sueltalo and yeah. he's like shut up <laughs> <laughs> but um, no I mean it's because a lot of people still have that machista in them and there's mm-hmm. one there's like, when people always say like my brother my brother called me the other day and he was having a lot of internal struggles with like you know making moves for himself and leaving my mom and stuff like that because he still lives in the same house as my mom he doesn't want to leave her um Mm. and i told him i was like dude i was like you you have to find peace within yourself man i was like you have to find peace in the fact that you know whatever moves you're gonna make next are you know gonna be the best moves for you and your fiance because he has a fiance Mm. and and he's afraid to leave her when he gets married mm -hmm. and his he had told me one time he's like i don't know how to cry 
Oh, wow. And I told him, I was like, why? He's like, I don't know. He's like, I get angry sometimes. He's like, I get upset. He's like, you know, I, I get emotional. He's like, but I just can't let myself cry. And Porque I was like, you no need to. <laughs> I was like, you need to. Yeah. I was like, you need to let those tears out, dude. I was like, there's, and I told him, like, I tell everybody else, there's nothing stronger than a man that's in tune with his emotions. There's just like one of the guys that follows me on Facebook now. Um, he had messaged me to, a pre, you know, uh, to thank me because he had finally gone to see a therapist. Mm -hmm. And when he saw the therapist, you know, he found himself just crying at the most random things. He's like, bro, he's like, what, what's the deal? He's like, <laughs> I don't know what to do. He's like, sometimes he's like, I'll be thinking about something happy. He's like, and I feel a tear coming out. <laughs> I was like, those are tears. I was like, those are tears of joy. Yeah. I was like, it's okay to cry. I was like, there's, a, I was like, you know, I was like, there's, there's nothing more disheartening. I was like, than seeing a man to me hold his child, like his firstborn, or you know. You know, mm -hmm. after his child yes. is born, mm -hmm. and they show no emotion. Uh. I was like, there should be emotion there. Yeah. You know, there should be some type of feeling. Yeah, Voodoo, I'm telling you, we need to meet. You need to meet my husband and my brother. <laughs> so <laughs> tell me why. Let me share this little tidbit because that is so true. So, um, I like I said, we I only have one child. My husband and I only have our son, and. You know, I was in the hospital. I had to be induced because I had a I, I have a lot of health problems. And so um, I was induced. So we were in the hospital almost for like two weeks. Wow. Yeah. Because then they ended up finding like a blood clot in my placenta, whatever, whatever. As soon as I popped out the child, I was in tears. Me too. And I turn around and I look at my husband and my husband's just like. It, like in shock and so I was like oh, okay you know once the, the everybody leaves and they leave you with the kid and you're bonding because you know you're supposed mm -hmm. to chest to chest whatever and he you know everybody left and I'm like okay this is when he's gonna cry didn't cry what and then I was like oh maybe when he changed his first diaper didn't cry And I'm like, okay. So I finally gave up. I'm like, okay, this man, It's you know, cry. he's like a tin. He's like the tin man, you know, he has no heart. <laughs> And so I'm like, okay, <laughs> I swear to you, we, we ended up taking his mom home after, you know, when they discharged us from the yeah. hospital because she was there. Yeah. So we took my suegra to her house and then we get home. He puts the baby down in the crib. I lay down to rest and he starts bawling like a baby no because he was in the hospital he didn't want to cry in front of people or i, I don't know and i'm like what the hell this was supposed to happen like a week ago my my guy <laughs> and he's like <laughs> it just came right now he's like i can't cry on cue and i'm like no you need to be more no, like yeah you know sometimes it takes people a while to like for it to actually hit them you know it's like when i tell people Um, cause like I had this girl, you know, complaining to me and this is completely, uh, you know, off topic from that, but sometimes it takes a while for it to hit people, mm -hmm. you know, when a certain situation happens, Yeah, you like know, when... it's just like, you know, for example, there was a guy that had told her that she loved, that he loved her, mm -hmm. but then two days later tells her like, I can't do this. Like I need to step back. And she was complaining and he's a piece of shit. He's a fuck boy and stuff like that. I was like, <laughs> have you ever thought about maybe it hit him? It slapped him in the face when he's once, once it became real mm -hmm. and he realized that he wasn't actually ready for something like that. Mm -hmm. I was like, instead of thinking of this from your standpoint, I was like, have you put yourself in his shoes? Mm. I was like, maybe he didn't want to drag you, you know, drag it out. I was like, and then, you know, have to break up with you to later on, you know, once it's actually like, you know, full blown whole relationship, everybody knows about y'all. Mm -hmm. I was like, maybe he still has some internal struggles that he has to deal with. I was like, so you can't just automatically jump the gun and be like, oh, he's a, you know, he's a, he's a piece of shit. He's a fuck boy. I was like, <laughs> he may have just done you a favor. Yeah. I, was like, I mean, I get it. You're not going to see it that life. way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. But. You know, it, 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 every time somebody, you know, says, you know, I, I can't cry, I can't do this. I'm like, go watch the podcast with Joe Rogan where they're asking him, you know, whether or not he cries. <laughs> And he says it himself. He's like, I cry when I'm happy. He's like, I'm, I, he's like, I cry at fights sometimes when somebody comes back and wins. He's like, and I get excited. He's like, I cry. He's like, I cry when I'm sad. He's like, you know, I cry because I feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and, you know, being raised in a Latino community, we're always raised to be very machistas, you know, mm -hmm. to always be tough. That's what I said. Los hombres you know, no lloran. Mm -hmm. Según. Según. <laughs> But you know what? They cry, trust me. Oh, yeah. You know what? <laughs> to me, the hardest time when I don't cry, like, on cue right away or, like, when you're supposed to, when somebody tells me that somebody passed away, like, it doesn't hit me. 
mm-hmm. and I can't cry. Like I'm just in shock. I guess at first I don't want to believe it, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then that's when I when I feel it, it just comes. Like I could be washing the dishes, and it just you know mm-hmm. like dawns on me. And but, it, but I like his perspective. I like the uh, Voodoo's perspective because. Like he said, you don't know what that other person is going through or how they process their emotions. Mm -hmm. I have never, like right now I'm stopping and I'm thinking about it. And my husband is one to, he's very observative. Mm -hmm. You, you know him. Mm -hmm. He's Mm -hmm. very quiet. He's very reserved when he's getting to know you because he likes to kind of see where he's at. See if he can be himself. Like not, not So that makes sense why he was almost, you know, two weeks late to the crying fest. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. What was I gonna say? You know what? And to me, my biggest thing, y lo que más me hablan del corazón, es cuando yo veo a mis hermanos llorar. Like, I'm like, oh, don't cry, brother. You know, like, it just breaks my heart. But at the same time, I'm like, oh, he's so sweet. <laughs> this girl, oh, you're funny. <laughs> I love it. I love it when you know, men show their emotions, like when yes. they're when they're first to see their wife walk down the aisle or their bride yes. walk down the aisle. That's amazing. When we when you see them when they have a baby and they shed a tear, yeah. like I I love all that. I'm so corny. Yeah. <laughs> you my, know, and, and the guy that I consider like my male role model, you know, is my uncle Johnny. You know, he was there to raise me part of the way and. When I had come back from deployment, July of that year, my grandma had passed away. My grandma was kind of like that, that glue, the glue that held mm. the family together. And he was very, very close to my grandma. And he's always been a very, very serious person. You know, he looked like Tony Montana from Scarface. <laughs> so he's always been very, very serious. You know, every time you see him, and they, people tell me the same thing. Like, y'all just have like this, this asshole face. Like, y'all just look like assholes. And... <laughs> Um, he used to do this thing where he used to always give everybody gifts for Christmas. But, you know, at some point in time, I got caro because, you know, all the nephews and the nieces started having kids and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. he had asked me to come over to his room and um, he said he was going to show me something. And I'm the only one out of like the nieces and nephews other than my brother doesn't have kids. And he handed me a 20. He's like, hey, man, he's like, I just want to give you this for Christmas. He's like, you know, I know it's not much. He's like, and uh, he's like, I just don't want to give it in front of everybody because, you know, he's like, I don't want him to feel bad or whatever. And mm-hmm. he had asked me, he's like, you know, how are you doing? I was like, I'm, I'm good, man. You know, I'm straight or whatever. And I told him, I was like, you know, how are you doing? And the moment I said, how are you doing? He just like broke. <gasps> oh, that happens and to me. He, he, he missed my grandma, you know, he couldn't. Mm. He was the one that would go every Sunday to, like, have breakfast with her. That was a thing. You know, every Sunday, it never failed. If you went over to my grandma's house between 9 and 10 o'clock, my Uncle Johnny was going to be there. He's going to be sitting at the table picking through the tortillas because he didn't like them burned. (laughs) So... That's funny. (laughs) That's cute. Yes. My grandpa used to do that. (laughs) To see my my, my uncle show emotion like that, you know, kind of made me realize, like, it's okay to show emotion you don't want to bottle it up because at that point in time Mm -hmm. it was a lot like he was it was like you know shaking you know that shaking there was a lot of emotion and feeling in there and and that's whenever I realized that I had to get a little bit more in tune with my emotions I was like that too I was very very you know stone cold face like they didn't really show a lot of emotion they didn't care for tears stuff like that you know at one point in time I couldn't cry just like my brother but it took some growth you know and a lot of times people aren't ready for that Mm -hmm. wow I think I think my favorite when I cry, like when I just feel like crying, it's like, I think it's best when you just go somewhere and you're sitting in your car y lloras a llanto así, a grito abierto. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best. Your head hurts. (laughs) Your eyes are like swollen. But I think that is the best feeling. Like grita, llora, like whatever you want. You know, I like to do it in the the ocean. Yeah. I, I sit that's by the ocean saying. and you I'm just like... You go in your like, car and you just drive somewhere beautiful and you just let it all out. Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh. Okay, so... I have one more question. <laughs> oh. So, you, uh, do you still okay. talk to your ex-wife? Um, yeah, from time to time. She'll message me just to see how I'm doing and stuff like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, we have a car that's still under each other's name or whatever, so... It, it, that, it, that's kind of like that. It, it, it made it made no sense to like take the car out of you know both of each other's name because she would have had to pay a higher interest on her car. So I'm like, I'm not gonna do that to you. 
you know, your baby daddy's already not paying child support. You know, you have to support you and your son. Like, I'm not going to make you go through that. You know, you don't, yeah. I don't want you to have to go from a $400 payment to a $700 payment. That's just credit shot. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're, you're so such nice. a sweetheart. Yes, oh seriously. my God. And you see him and he does look like Sorry, no, no disrespect, Voodoo. I, I love you, but mean. <laughs> you're, but you're, you're such a sweetheart. Yes, he is. Um, because honestly, after how she did you, it's como para que I'm not going to help you, but at the same time, the love that you have for her son, I think that's, that's what what's helps. That's genuine. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I mean, that was the biggest thing. You know, I was more worried about him. And I mean, this past time that she called me, you know, it was because she was having issues with, with, with her boyfriend and having issues with trust and stuff like that. And She's still calling. She had asked me. You know, she needs how, help. <laughs> yes, she does. <laughs> she had, well, well, she had asked me, you know, how I did it to deal with her. And I told her, I was like, what do you mean? She's like, well, how'd you do it to deal with me whenever I was putting you through everything? I was like, I did it. And I divorced you, remember? <laughs> and she just, like, stood back. And I asked her, I was like, let me be real with you. I was like, I've forgiven everything that happened. I was like, have you forgiven yourself for everything you did to me? And she's like, well, yeah. I was like, no, no, no. Be honest with yourself. Have you forgiven yourself for everything that you you did to me? And she's like, what do you mean? I was like, because you're taking shit from somebody that you shouldn't be taking. Mm-hmm. I was like, if he's out there cheating on you and out there talking to other women, I was like, why are you allowing that? I was like, you would have never allowed that with me. She's like, well, she's like, you know, I always wanted to be good, you know, and I always wanted to show to show people that, you know, I could have been a better person and this and that. And, you know, she's like, I always held myself accountable for everything that I did to you, and I didn't want to make the same mistake. I was like, so you are not making the same mistake, but at the same time, I was you're like, you're allowing it. yourself to, mm-hmm. yeah, you're allowing yourself to be hurt. I was like, because of everything you did to me, I was like, you need to forgive yourself for that first, and then y'all need to go see therapy if y'all are going to make this work. Yeah. I was like, you need to give her your therapist. You need to give her your therapist. No, that's, number. Th- that's gold. My no. therapist don't like her. Oh, yeah, like yeah, her. that's true. I wouldn't like her either. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like her as we speak and I, I, I'm not even part of this <laughs> yeah, yeah I agree but como tu hermana and your older sister because I am very much older than you Luda. same here um, as your older sister I do not claim her so I'm just saying no yeah <laughs> I do not drop it um, and I was gonna ask you my question was are you in a relationship now do you ha- wait 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 before no. that do you have any kids no oh. I don't have kids and you're not um, in a relationship. My sperm, my sperm count is kind of low, so it's harder for me to have kids. Oh, um, okay. But no, I'm not in a relationship. And am I open to it? Yeah. Am I searching for it? No. Good. Um, you didn't search just for because, it. Yeah. Just because right now I'm really focused on like the goals that I have right now. Um, and, and the issue that I'm running into a lot is, you know, every woman wants to mention TikTok and social media and all these women and all these bitches and this and that and mm. you know and I'm like you shouldn't be worried about them yeah mm-hmm. you should be worried about me you should be worried about the way that I respond to messages or exactly. comments and stuff like that yeah you know if you're worried about them then you need to go you know handle your own insecurity yeah that's an insecurity in itself I was like and that's not something that I'm going to progress with mm-hmm. um and then you know at the same time it's like not a lot of women can bring that same energy that I bring to the table you know um Everybody always says, like, oh, it's, 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 a, it's a love language or whatever, but I'm going to try to do the most. You know, I'm going to try to remember, you know, your favorite drink, your favorite flowers, stuff like that. Aww. If you tell me that you've had a bad day or whatever, you've been on your feet all day, then I'm going to go run a bath, put some eucalyptus mint oil in there, all that stuff. Aww. I'll make dinner. Oh, my you know, goodness. I'll make sure that you don't have to, like, you know, worry about all that stuff. But for some reason, it's like a lot of women are like, well, that's not what I want. You know, I just I want somebody that's going to be my supporter. And I'm like... Okay, you know, I get that. But at the same time, just having somebody think for you to that extent should be something in itself. Um, I feel, though, like this generation, I'm kind of glad that you brought that up because I feel like this generation has been kind of hurt by social media in that sense. Um, I'm, oh, man, don't bring that up. That's the <laughs> topic that I always talk about. Yes, <laughs> because I feel like you know my younger brother very handsome guy if he wasn't my brother i would hit on him he's very handsome you know when he's very disciplined he's very thoughtful just like you are very romantic he has a huge heart um he he has not had the best of luck with women and so i've even gone out of my way to try to find him a good woman i'm like i don't want a woman with like 
you know, 10,000 followers on Instagram, that means nothing to me. Mm -hmm. I don't want her out there, Mm -hmm. like, showing her body and showing her ass because then what are you going to show my brother that's so unique? You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. Um, And, you know, I met this, I met this beautiful girl, hermosa mujer from Guanajuato, pero es de esas de Guanajuato, Mm -hmm. light skin, blonde, my brother's type, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. she was crying to me because she's like, oh, you know, like, guys, they're so mean and they're F boys and all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, girl, I have a brother. And, you know, he's around your age. Look at him. He's she's like, oh, my God, he's so handsome. And I'm like, yeah, I go. But I'm just I don't want a little hoochie for him, you know. <laughs> and she was like, but how is he? And I said, oh, he's really thoughtful, you know, like he's. He loves really hard when he loves, you know, he's very, um, cuando se compromete, se compromete, like mm-hmm. he's very responsible and mm-hmm. stuff. And she's like, oh, and then her friend, you know, kind of came over her as he like sideways. And then she goes, she likes bad boys. Mm-hmm. She'll break his heart. Oh, no. And I said, what? And then she's like, yeah, she goes, when they're too nice, it's just. I don't know. I, I I get bored, and I was what? like, "Girl, like that's what I'm looking for. Somebody that's gonna take care of me, not monetarily. I mean, yeah, that'd be nice too. But <laughs> <laughs> you're not looking for a sugar daddy. No, I'm not. I'm looking for somebody to love me, to help me on my bad days, like Voodoo said. You know, like mm-hmm. I need one of. I need a Voodoo down here in San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the problem is, and it's something that I brought up with social media. You know, it's it's that eighty twenty rule. You know, mm-hmm. people see that 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 twenty percent or whatever. They're willing to leave their eighty percent for that twenty percent that they see on social media because it looks so much greener. Mm-hmm. You know, so they're willing to just jump the gun. You know, it's it's so easy to to uh, you know uh, fold to somebody. It gives you an amazing compliment when you're having a bad day, mm-hmm. and that's why I hate social media is because so many people are out here just looking for that attention that they're lacking at home but what they're not seeing is everything else that the other person's willing to give them you know you may have a hard worker that's willing to give you the freaking world but because he's not consistently texting you or checking up on you automatically you're going to give in to a guy that's going to text you all the freaking time right not really mm-hmm. didn't realize that the responsible. reason why that guy is probably texting you all the time is probably because he's not doing as great as your man yeah exactly. you know it's probably because he doesn't have a job like you know your man and stuff like that mm-hmm. and i remember all the way down back to the myspace time right you know when mm-hmm. there was like the top five or the top ten yes. women yes. used to get mad whenever like i remember there was one friend of mine or whatever that i made my girlfriend at that time my one and she messaged me talking about oh wow you're gonna remove me from your one because of this girl and this and i was like whoa what like what, what what's going on right now like <laughs> that's my girlfriend like what do you what and you see people like that all the time and it's just like you know they on get mad over TikTok. the stupidest things yeah. and and they do on, they romanticize what they see on social media yes. when it's that's not even a full-on relationship a relationship is hard yeah it's, and, oh, you know and i'm gonna be real with you because I'll post the link for once you post this. I'll post the link on my Instagram. I'm going to be real with you, and it's probably going to piss off some people. But I have talked to a couple people off of TikTok, whatever. Like, we've gone to, like, messages on the phone and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be real with you. A a lot of what they post up on TikTok and social media is a facade because some of these fucking Mm -hmm. women are in pendejas. I'm like, what are you doing? It's all about looks to some people. You Mm -hmm. are nothing... What you, you're nothing like what you showcase on social media, right? Mm-hmm. Nothing kind of like, whatsoever. Kind of like couples when when mm-hmm. somebody like you know you know a couple and you know how they really live, but in social media it's like amazing, it's great, mm-hmm. is the best husband ever, <laughs> yes. is the best wife ever. Mm-hmm. But you know they're cheating on each other. Yes. And you know that they have. I issues. have a few of those. I have yes. a few of those that I've unfollowed for that same reason because yeah. it's like, girl, it's like, get out of here. Yeah. Stop being fake. You know, and that's that's yeah. one thing that I a hundred percent agree with you, Voodoo. Um, you know, I have social media because of embracing my markings and, you know, I'm trying to do something where I'm trying to build my own personal brand and stuff like that. But you will mm-hmm. never see my son and my husband on social media, mm-hmm. not because I want to hide them. But because I'm so happy with that part of my life. That you want to protect it. I want to protect it. Mm -hmm. And privacy is honestly Mm -hmm. like the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. I don't need somebody else to validate my relationship with my husband 
Just be- because you're posting it there. Exactly. exactly. Like, he does the sweetest things. Like, he'll get my son and he'll put flowers and candles all over the house. Mm-hmm. I don't post that kind of stuff because yeah. it's nobody's business. Yeah. I really don't post my business out there either. Yeah. And I I do post happy <laughs> posts, you know, like when I got hired or when I yeah, became yeah. a lead. Something that I'm very proud of, you yeah. know, stuff like that. And I do post my son in social media, but hardly because he doesn't let me take pictures. <laughs> <laughs> he's at that age where he's like, no. But even like... He's 15. Even like that with like positive things, positive mm-hmm. things, I keep them... Very, very hush hush because yes. you're always going to have yeah. those people those that are going to try are. to throw shade. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Envy, yeah. Envy, you know, there's yeah. not a lot of people, there's not a lot of people that know what I have going on right now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, how I've been paying off debt and stuff like that like crazy because I want to buy my house. And, you know, I don't want, you know? I, I don't want yeah. people, you know, to try to throw shade or automatically, you know, and it's like, you know, you don't need negativity in your life. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, and, and I, and people like to judge based off what they see on social media, you know, like for example, on TikTok. You know, people like to judge based off of that. I'm like, look, y'all get to see like three second, three sixty second videos of me throughout mm-hmm. the day, and you think you can judge me based off of that? Right. Like, no, come and walk them out in my shoes real quick. Yeah, mm-hmm. then exactly. you can actually judge. Yeah. No, I really want to meet you, Voodoo. Yeah. I don't know if you would be up for it, but I'm. I'm <laughs> you need to fly out here, or we need to fly to Oklahoma. I, I'm willing. I'm down. Like, I'm if he down. can't fly down here, I'm down to go down to yeah, Oklahoma I'm down to see like everything that he told me because I had this total, complete different picture of Oklahoma. Yes. And obviously, I was wrong. <laughs> well, you know, the fun, funny thing is, is other people think that it's like uh, all there's going to be in Oklahoma is teepees and stuff like that, and it's like no, <laughs> no. You know, our well, natives. Just imagine evolved, a whole bunch of hillbillies. Like, and like, that's what I imagine too. Yeah. And I imagine and overalls. I mean, yes. And overalls. <laughs> you will run it. You. I mean, that's the thing, though. You will run into some of them like that. And I, this is why I always tell people, like, don't judge a book by its cover. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, because I went to when I was at the barber shop. Um, there was a guy that came in and, you know, kind of a little smelly in his overalls, <laughs> kind of looked a little dirty, <laughs> and you know, talking his old school, you know, shit and stuff like that. And then. Uh, he handed the other barber a hundred dollar bill for his haircut. I was like, damn, he's wow. like, I'll see you next month, buddy. Wow. And then walked away and I was like, who, I was like, who the hell is that? And he's like, he owns like 2000 heads of cattle. He's like, like, you know, 30 minutes south of here. He's like, he's rich as hell. Wow. He's, like, he's a millionaire. He's like, but you never, you'll never notice it. He's like, you don't dress like it. And that's why I tell people all the time, like, Don't do not worry, go yeah. based off of what social media shows you. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of people out here that have name brand clothes, yeah. you know, they want to act like they have money and do everything to act like they have money instead of actually going anything. and getting money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. Yes. I mean, you got farmers out here that could probably buy out the entire state, but they're they're very very conservative with their money. Um, I have a friend of mine; she works at one of the the the, the facilities that sells the big old John Deere tractors. Oh yeah, yeah. This man just went in there, and uh, he's ninety eight years old. Still works out on his farm. Wow. Uh, he bought, uh, how much are those things? I want to say they're 100000 a piece. And he went in there and bought 10 of them. <gasps> Cash. What? Oh, my. I'm moving yeah, to Oklahoma. No, okay. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting myself a sugar debt. No, I'm kidding. A farmer. Yeah, a farmer. farmer. <laughs> wow. No, so that's why. I survive in a farm. No, but that's why they have Farmers.com. Now oh, I understand. Oh, yeah. Now I understand. <laughs> yeah. I wish they all looked like the commercial, though. I know. Mm-hmm. So, no, I totally no, forgot no. about that. <laughs> <laughs> Farmers, Farmers <don't>. only. <laughs> oh, oh man. man, I totally forgot about that. Now I get it. Now I totally get it. I never got it before. I'm like, what the heck? But now you know, men buying tractors, cash. Wow, wow, that's wow. impressive. That's more impressive yeah, than yeah. like trying to take me to the Gucci store. Oh, you yeah, know? exactly. <laughs> And, and the sad part is, you know, it's like that we and the girl that uh, worked at that store talked about. It's like, oh, you know, his his farm will probably pay for pay for everything in like three months. She's like, but you know what the sad part is? She's like, what? She's like, one of his grandchildren already came in here talking about how they're going to sell all his stuff when he dies. She's like, mm. they don't want to deal with me. And I was like, that's sad. Like this man has been working on it his entire life, and that's what they're going to do. For somebody to just like, come and sell it like nothing. Mm-hmm. That's sad. Mm-hmm. But you know what? That's how you raise certain kids. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, I was just having that conversation with my younger brother yesterday because my parents are trying to leave us, you know, an inheritance money wise, 
And I told him, I said, you know what? I am not looking to be left with anything. Yeah. If if my parents want to leave it to you, then go for it. But I hope that you know how to invest that money and make it double than what they did. Like, yeah. don't go out and be stupid and waste it in, you know, a couple of days when it took my dad years to get that money. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And and he was like, yeah, vice versa, sis. Like, if you get it. And I'm like, dude, and I hope they don't. But if they do, let's think about how we can multiply that money. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you I. Can, uh, you can come to Oklahoma and invest in apartment complexes. And ooh, duplexes that's smart. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I did. We. So you, you're good with business too, Voodoo? Sounds like it. Uh, I, was a hus- I, was, I was a hustler, so. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Comes, no, right. so I mean, it's like I told. I, I asked somebody in you know on my TikTok one time, and I said, "Would if I gave you a million dollars, would you rather live in California? Or would you rather live in the Midwest?" And of course, they're like, "Oh, California, because we got the Dodgers and we got the coast and we got this and we got that." I was like, "Oh man," I was like, "You're not thinking of this from a business standpoint." Mm-hmm. I was like, "Do you know what a million dollars could get you here in Oklahoma?" He's like, "No," and I was like, "There is a 62 unit apartment complex that just went up for seven hundred twenty five thousand dollars." I was like, "You pay that?" Wow. I was like. Oh, up front i was like every unit is paying you 600 a month i was like once you pay your manager and stuff Damn. like that i was like you probably give yourself a pretty good income of like 250,000 a year i was like but y'all don't think about it like that yeah mm-hmm. damn right is like, 600 over there uh i pay 720 for my 1100 square foot two bedroom one and a half bath townhouse what <laughs> That is like a her room. Face. If you could see her face, Voodoo. This is like a room in San Diego. Like, when not, not even. Maybe like does a it, bedroom. Does it make it? Oh does my. it make it worse if my water if my water and light are included too? You're moving. Are you moving? Are you moving? My head just exploded. Like what? I think she's yeah, moving, so Voodoo. <laughs> The house that I'm looking at right now is uh, four bedrooms, two and a half baths. It's 2,200 square feet. And once I do everything, um, I should be paying 585 a month for it. <gasps> what? Wow. Oh, my goodness. Mm. You know what? I'll move to Oklahoma and I'll just install AC and just stay in the in the house the whole time. Well, girl, for a million, I mean, for 250000 <laughs> yeah. a year, imagine the nice house that you can get out there. With the pool? Oh. <gasps> install ac we have ac already <laughs> oh, i guess she needs extra ones <laughs> yeah yes yes no nah, i mean you don't need extra ones i keep my i, I keep my place at 63 degrees <laughs> <laughs> oh that's 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 the kind of weather we like yes yes yes, yes. um <laughs> we i don't have ac in my house it, because we're in the coast you know and yeah, it's yeah. supposedly not that hot but Man, man. I, pero no, sabes que, Voodoo? I, I need advice because I have money saved up, but I don't know how to invest it. So I'll, uh-huh. I'll hit you up on the side. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can. I, cryptocurrency. Go look, go look at cryptocurrency right now. I, I okay. hear about that. Yeah. Man, I don't want this conversation <laughs> to end. You I are know. amazing, Voodoo. I'm going to go and follow you like as soon as this is over. Yes. Um, I'm telling you. Oh, and you're I, amazing. And I claim him. He's my brother, not your brother. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, uh, you're amazing, Voodoo. You, you're a very motivating person. And yes. we look up to that. you. And I wish there would be more men like you. you yes. Know, out there. I hope you're willing to come back because I know we didn't even touch on much yeah and it's already There's been an hour and a half it's supposed to be an hour <laughs> <laughs> but it's worth it it's yes, worth it it's been great but i hope are you willing to come back when do you want me back oh, oh yeah. hell yeah That's i don't know I we'll, like. we'll, we'll work it out behind the scenes you know, thank you so much voodoo we really appreciate you it was we, very fun i can't wait you no, know thank you guys for having me on you know on it you know yeah, just let me know once the part comes out. You know, I'll shoot it to my social media. I'll put it on my TikTok so people can go listen. Yes, Ooh, yes. Yeah. Right now, I just I just went back to school. I'm going to school for um, digital marketing and social media marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so right now, as my schedule allows me, I'm releasing um, or we're releasing one episode a month. So you're up for the month mm-hmm. of October. And I think it's kind of okay. fitting too because you know voodoo October. <laughs> it's my favorite month too. No, but we look forward to having you in the future, voodoo, and um, stay tuned on October. 
Um, I hope you don't mind. I'll go into your social media and steal like a picture from there. Or I don't know if you want to send me one directly so then I can do promo too um, before it comes out. And then... Um, steal, steal whatever picture you want. Okay. And then um, and then I'll let you... Of course, Mama. Thank you guys for having me on. Yes. Yeah. And I hope you continue to raise awareness yes. about mental health and, you know, keep doing your thing. Keep helping people yes. without even trying because apparently that's what you do, you know? Yeah, he doesn't like, even try. Mm-hmm. It, you don't try. People come to you automatically. You help them out somehow and it, it all works well in the end. I'm excited to see what he has for the future. Yeah, I agree. Like if you release a book, Girl, you'll become see a motivation. Oh, oh. You will see the future. Oh, I'll bring you along. All right, Mama. So I appreciate you. Thank All you. Right. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. You too, Mama. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Oh my god, he's so much fun. He is. He's so sweet. We we definitely have to have him back for another um episode and see, you know, what else he has cuz I know he has so much more than that, but I kind of just wanted to introduce him to everybody yes. and see who he is. Honestly, to me he's a legend. Mm-hmm. To me, he's a legend. He, from, like I said, this is the first time I talked to him. I haven't followed him. Mm -hmm. I just saw him from when we talked about it. Yeah, yeah. We briefly talk about when we have a guest. I never ask for details because I like for it to be genuine and, like, me just learn about the person as we're recording. And And I love that because it's always super honest and genuine. Yeah, you end up knowing more about the person than I do before we come. And I love that. Like, it's like a surprise to Mm -hmm. me. You know what I mean? And it's like very genuine. And it's not like, I don't know, planned or anything like that. So Mm -hmm. I will follow him now after. But yeah, he's an amazing person. He sounds like a, a good man with a good head on his shoulders. Yes, yes yes and he's so young he's 29 yes you know but i i mean obviously he had to grow up fast at, fast at a young age and mm-hmm. i admire him that was so sweet how he said he he talked to his mom about us yes the this. fact that she he, that he asked her for advice and you know yeah. that he did his research yeah and, and that's awesome so i love that i love that i hope you guys enjoyed this episode um i'm just like this is just so awesome. I know. I didn't so want awesome. this one to end. Yeah. He's great. I know. We kind of went over, but, but but hopefully yeah. you guys enjoyed it as yes. much as we did. We will see you guys in the next episode. See you later. Bye. Bye. I want to hear your story or I want to support your small business. To do so, please go ahead and visit embracingmymarkings.com. Thank you for tuning in.